Production funding is provided by A. Reddix and Associates Health Information Resource Center, offering short-term training for long-term professional careers in medical coding. HIRCVA.net. Discussing the issues and celebrating the successes of the African American community. This is another view. Hello everyone, I'm Barbara Ham Lee. Welcome to Another View. This is Father's Day weekend, a time when we celebrate dads for their love, guidance, help, and nurturing of their children. But at a time when 72% of black children are born to unwed mothers, we wonder, what's going on with African-American male-female relationships? Why are there so many fathers, but so few men in committed relationships? Here's with some, here with some answers. We welcome back Brian Hawkins, coordinator of the Fathers in Training program, along with therapist Kevin Childs of Kevin Childs Counseling Services. Welcome back to the show, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Last time we were talking about kids, now we're going to talk about women, okay. men, mm. <laughs> relationships. It kind of all goes there oh, together. Yeah, no but, but it is Father's Day weekend, and we think yes. about our dads, and, and we think about our fathers. And what, what's going on from a male perspective in terms of relationships? Well, I think when we start thinking about Father's Day, I think a whole lot of things are really occurring. For those of us who grew up without sound, significant men in our lives, uh, we can, and we do have children, we begin to think, uh, is this something to celebrate? You know, mm -hmm. is somebody going to say to me Happy Father's Day? And then I start to think personally, internally, am I doing everything that a father should be doing? But if I've never been taught, and I've never seen anybody model that type of behavior, mm -hmm. then I could stumble a bit. Mm -hmm. Kevin, what do you see as the biggest obstacle towards, you know, people coming together and staying in a committed relationship? Well, part of it, I believe, is what Brian said, models. Mm -hmm. A lot of times there are not enough models for folks to base the norms on. Mm -hmm. And so we keep seeing something different than the father in the home and being there for a long time and treating his significant other in a way that's going to be respectful and um, loving and those things, caring. And then we're going to struggle. We might get our norms from the media or from our buddies and, right. and sometimes you know, entertainment is just that entertainment mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily mm -hmm. reflective of real life. And then we also have the fact that if I don't know a lot, it's not much I can teach you. Mm -hmm. You see, and so then where are we getting our norms and our, and our ideas and relationships from? Well, we know that people come together they procreate. I mean, yes, because absolutely. of that, you yeah. know, seventy-two percent of black children being born to single mothers. Right. So we know that that's not the issue. Right. But what do you think is the biggest obstacle towards taking that beginning and carrying it long term? Is it communication? Well, I think communication plays a major role in that. I believe that, of course, we know that people are going to get together. <laughs> that's a given. That's a normal, normal thing. But mm -hmm. I think when we get together. What are the expectations? Absolutely. Uh, what are we talking about when we get together? See, it could be one thing uh, that we're getting together because we're sexually attracted to each other physically. Mm -hmm. But what's that child? You know, because see, we can think about that before we do that, right? Mm -hmm. We can say, mm -hmm. uh, I don't mind going out with you and being with you, but marriage is not right now here for me. Uh, I don't want any children. Well, you know, you know? And, that, and that's an interesting point because don't you have to know yourself and kind of what you want to do first before you can move into that? Yes. I agree with you 100 yes. percent on that. Yes. A lot of times people go into the relationship looking for happiness mm -hmm. and I think that while it can add to where we are, who we are and those types of things, mm -hmm. we need to be find some happiness in and of ourselves mm -hmm. so that we're not dependent on someone else. There's too much power to give to someone else who may not even be adequate enough to give you that, okay? Mm -hmm. We have to be, find some way within ourselves to find some happiness, to feel good about ourselves. And in that way, we can go into the relationship on equal footing, mm -hmm. as opposed mm -hmm. to in a, in a, if you're talking about leverage, I'm yeah. needing you for my happiness. And, mm -hmm. and that kind of puts you in a bad situation, almost desperate. Because at some point, that, that's gonna become an issue within uh -huh. the relationship also. But, but uh, Barbara, also, that if we are looking for love, let's start from the beginning of the relationship. Once mm -hmm. you have a child, especially a young lady, not, not only just young men, but young ladies, they start to look for love in all the wrong places if that father has not been significant in their lives. So if he's there, whether he's there or not, he's still some type of role model. 
-hmm. A lot of people don't seem to get that. Uh, when he's there uh, and if he's working hard to stay involved in the family, uh, a young lady gets an opportunity to see a man, although he may struggle from time to time, he doesn't run away. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, she'll get an opportunity to see him when he does go through conflict, how to mediate that and get through that process and still be there for the family. Uh, and that's why it's so important, though, for children to have both the mother and the father there so that they can see ultimately how they should be treated mm -hmm. moving forward if it's a positive it's a relationship. Positive, yeah, if it's a positive relationship. And I also think that people get divorces and they separate and they have children out of wedlock. I want to say that if a parent and a parent, mother and a father, can still have a healthy relationship, they don't necessarily have to be in the same house. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, well, we all want that ideal situation, but we want it to be positive. But many times, folks do not plan on staying together. So we're promoting, can we co-parent? That's what we're promoting. Mm -hmm. And how do we co-parent and stop focusing so much on our own individual needs and begin to focus on what the children need? Mm -hmm. So, and you have to work through that. That's a process, and you need training around it. So, all right, you're in this relationship. You're, you know, you have a child. Mm -hmm. How do you start that conversation about co-parenting if you're not going to stay right. together? How do you start that conversation? Well, the major hurdle is understanding that we're not going to stay together. <laughs> okay, that's the major hurdle because well, I may feel that way, you may not. Mm. And we haven't had that. Or I might be a, a little reluctant to say that because that might mean the end of this relationship. Mm -hmm. I like it as it is. You may want more from it than mm -hmm. what it's currently providing. So if I tell you, <laughs> I think this, I like it like it is. I don't think <laughs> I want to get married now. Right. Then I'm running the risk of okay. dissolving that relationship. So that's a major hurdle mm -hmm. to be able to say, come together when Brian talked about expectations. Mm. We need to have the same type of expectations. But you know, I, mm -hmm. I, I want us to get to a point in our community, and I wonder how we do this, where our young people think about this conversation, the mm -hmm. are we going to be together, you know, who's the right man for me, who's the right woman yeah. for me, before they have the children. <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely you know, change the world that, if we could do that. Exactly. That's, but I mean, yeah. because isn't that a major issue that we're facing right now is right. because we keep you know, okay. the, the, the girl gets pregnant, the guy stays or doesn't stay, you know, and so there's a, a disproportionate um, uh, expense, um, expectation, uh -huh. you know, mm -hmm. on the parenting, sure. the parent who's, who's actually there. Mm -hmm. um, so if we could get them to start thinking before you even get to that point, here's mm -hmm. some things that you need to look at. What do they need to look at? Well, I think it starts in the home initially then, you know, it starts with the parents. Uh, Sometimes we wait too long b before we have that conversation. And I think that what we need to do is we need to go ahead and start talking about it. We live in an information age, Barbara. Mm -hmm. So you know that information is all around. Kids as young as this two-year-old uh, <laughs> that I have, she <laughs> sees things and she's able to, to look at it and see it and internalize it to an extent. Mm -hmm. Now you have a 12-year-old who's coming home and letting themselves in the, in the house. What are they looking at on TV? What, what is entertaining them? Uh, what type of conversations are, are, is she having or he having on the way home from school. Mm -hmm. Now, the 12 or 13 year olds I talk to, I know what they're talking about. <laughs> it's not just basketball, uh, hopscotch, or any of that. It's about who do you like? Do, are you going to do it? That's what it's about. Hmm. You know, so it, it, I think it falls mm -hmm. on us. And so when you parents. say this, okay, mm -hmm. absolutely. So that's where, so it begins right in the home. Mm -hmm. and, um, and begin to have this conversation early, like we said, and talk about and kind of normalize what expectations ought mm -hmm. to be and those kinds of things. Also, though, we don't want to ignore the fact that there are institutions in our communities yes. that can be a form for those types of That's things. True. Especially if, we, if there isn't a dad in the house. <coughs> yes, isn't in a dad in the house, with or without, absolutely. With or without. Yeah, right. with, mm -hmm. or without. with or without. There are mm -hmm. institutions in our community where maybe they can, we can build in mm -hmm. conversations about uh, relationships and self-esteem and what you see on TV may not be the norm and what you hear from your friends may not be the norm but mm -hmm. here are some other ideals and some other things to talk about. If you look at the church, you look at boys and girls clubs, you can look at some schools after yes. activities, lots of different places mm -hmm. Resource most where, most yeah sure, all types of programs. There's always a discussion about the number of marriageable men <laughs> who are available. 
yeah. um, you know, within the black community. And then you also have the struggle of uh, the disparity in income. Okay. Um, and so forth. Sure. So, and, and women, you hear women talk a lot about, you know, yeah. well, do I go to blue collar route or do I, right. you know, and then some people say, well, that's lowering your standard. I mean, it's all that dynamic that goes on in there. But as you look at helping people to have healthy relationships, what kinds of questions should they be asking themselves and each other as mm -hmm. they're trying to pull this relationship together? Mm -hmm. Well, I think even before they the kind of questions they're thinking about before they mm -hmm. meet someone ought to be what are the types of things that make me happy independent of someone else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, what are the type, what are my principles? Yeah. What are my mm -hmm. ideals? Those kinds of things. Um, do I, am I someone who is ambitious and want to be utterly mobile? Mm -hmm. And that's one thing. And if I run into someone who is not that, maybe they have a skill, but they're content in working where yes. they are. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that going to drive me crazy? <laughs> right? Or can right. I live and be okay with that? Right. That, that? You know, and if that's going to drive me crazy, then I need to not look at getting into a long-term relationship mm -hmm. with right. someone whose ideals don't don't match mine. Don't match yours. Those types of Brian. things. Yeah. Well, now, now usually we've been taught now to get a list and write all the things out. And as you're going through the dating, you're checking these lists, just checking your list off. And and I say even if you are able to check most of those off. You're still two separate individuals. There are going to be times where you're still going to have difficulties. And see, many of us don't anticipate that we may have conflict. Oh, yeah. he's perfect for me, they say. You know? <laughs> but then you get in this relationship and things happen, call life. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Children come. And he grew up on this side of the, of the tracks. And he became successful because he worked hard to do so. You grew up in a two-parent household, and you went to the best of schools, and you all met each other. Well, he has a different mindset as to how he wants his children raised than you. So when you mm -hmm. talk about physical discipline, you cry because that's not what we did. My father didn't do me. He says, well, these two boys need somebody to help them to understand that, you know, mm -hmm. I, hitting is not my thing, but sometimes the corporate discipline is used in these relationships. Money issues, just like right now, when we're going through what we're going through in this nation, uh, he came in with a lot of money, a lot of visions, and a lot of plans, but now he has no job. So how mm -hmm. do we deal with these, what I call, bumps in the road? This one here is a large bump when you lose a job. Mm -hmm. uh, so it has to be about something beyond all of that. It's about this internal relationship that I have. First of all, knowing how to love myself like Kevin talked about, but also mm -hmm. the things that I love in you. And those things that I love in you, when things get bad, those are the things that I anchor myself to. But mm -hmm. that means... It's called, for me, it's a spirit of total commitment. I don't care what happens. You have to be totally committed. Now, many of us have never had to commit quite like that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that has to be. And if we don't see our parents or our grandparents yeah. with that total commitment, then that's a new skill for well, us that we have to Right. Learn. Some of the expectation is, is that because I'm considered a good catch, if you don't do what you need to do and it don't happen, I can go somewhere else. I can leave mm -hmm. this. So what the total commitment is, is, is no matter what goes down, if we're in this together, then we're together. You know? So yeah, I may have difficulties communicating sometimes. Sometimes I may go into the other room and feel like I don't want to be bothered. But that's a short period. That does not mean that I'm leaving. But if she's seen him or someone in her life go into another room, she may just go crazy. What does that mean to her? Mm -hmm. It may mean, oh, he's getting ready to leave me. And then yeah. she may do some things <laughs> that might help push him. <laughs> you know so, so talking is critical. It's, it's so, it's so it important. It's so critical. And, Kevin, what do you tell, so if you mm -hmm. have a daughter. And, and I do. You want to, and yeah. you have a daughter. What do you tell your daughter about how, from a father's perspective, what her expectations should be for a mate? Hmm. Find somebody like your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is a good he ain't gonna be good yeah, to me, good. but he'll be alright. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love it. Yeah. But, well, that's you know part of it is is to look at the things that you like between myself and your mom, okay, and the things that that you like about our household and how we do things and and how I treat you and those types of things. Mm -hmm. And if those things kind of feel good, feel right to you, then look for those types of things in mm -hmm. in the man you want to consider to be with that mm -hmm. type of thing. And so it's. It's me having confidence. This person, uh, me having confidence in, and um, the type of atmosphere I create in my home yeah. with my wife and that type of thing, mm -hmm. and knowing that, um, not perfect, but knowing that right. there's some qualities there that um, 
my children can look at and can and will look at anyway mm -hmm. but understand that they can use that to build themselves and build their lives and their relationships mm -hmm. and um, encouraging dialogue one uh, family dialogue you know not necessarily as a group we don't have to say that but feel comfortable mm -hmm. not to come talk to me or your mom your brother and sister they can talk those types of things and we we discuss those mm -hmm. types of things so so what I say to her is see the things and the things I like I, I um, tell her to look for and it's kind of old school for me but is um, is he willing to work? Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Does he does he yeah. respect does he respect you himself and does he respect you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those things are very important mm -hmm. to me. And, and Brian, yeah. do you have a son? I have several sons. You have several yeah, sons. Four sons. Okay. Yeah. Do you have that same conversation or do you have a different conversation with um, your sons? Yeah, I, I have a similar conversation with my sons, but you know, it's 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 kinda interesting because um, as I talk to them they go through stages you know mm. there, there are times when they hear I used to teach them just a few things and and mm -hmm. one the basic stuff was common courtesy mm -hmm. you know but as they have gone through these stages <laughs> common courtesy kind of went away mm -hmm. thank you please you're welcome in mm -hmm. relationships when we're trying to establish this in a, a foundation of a good relationship you have to have some respect mm -hmm. and we've taught you to say open the door We've taught you to say thank you, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so you have to go back and kind of remind well, yeah, them. Yeah, 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 <laughs> because because they're, they're doing it different. Here's the other piece that gets me when I'm when I'm dealing with my sons and talking to them. They text him. They text him. They're, they're not talking. It's something to be said about having an individual conversation like you, like we're having mm -hmm. face to face. Mm -hmm. You know, you can mm -hmm. read my body language. You can tell how I feel about you. You know, if you can assess it good. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're rather they don't pick up the phone. They text. And so I'm just saying, there's a distance for me. Yeah. But uh, but I do raise them to be extremely respectful. Uh, I have them to understand that that first of all, let's not get anyone pregnant, because once you get someone pregnant in our family, then it's your responsibility as a man to provide this kind of care. Mm -hmm. So so and money, finances, mm -hmm. and so they they just out of college, they're struggling. <laughs> but uh, but they're doing okay. Yeah, well, that's what some of the neighbors say. They're good kids. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's a good thing. Yeah, the neighbors yeah, say yeah, right. We only have a few minutes left, and I want to get to co-parenting, uh -huh. the discussion of how you come together to parent a child. I know that I'm asking a lot yeah. in like two minutes, but mm -hmm. but give just some that's basic right. steps in terms of if you and your uh, your significant other are struggling right. over how you're going to raise your kid. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll start with you, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the communication process, and Brian mentioned before, common courtesy goes a long way because that shows respect. Right. And mm -hmm. that means we can talk. Hopefully we can talk without a lot of the other thing is getting in the way, you know, rolling the eyes, ignoring and interrupting, yeah. all those types of things, mm -hmm. which can go both ways. Mm -hmm. um, so we want you to bring common courtesy to the process. We also want you to be able to uh, adequately express your thoughts. Okay, so we need to don't walk away holding, I don't want to say this because I'm concerned, or I'm, say it, but say it in a way that somebody can hear it. Yes. Okay, they mm -hmm. can receive it. Mm -hmm. Those are the kinds of things we're looking at doing. Of course, listening is going to be right. critical. Mm -hmm. So those are the types of things we talk about you know, come in there with common courtesy. Come in there, um, willing to express what you're what you're thinking about and feeling in a way that somebody can receive it. Listen, we have to listen, and not listen to try to find oh. chinks in the armor, oh my. but listen with a mind to understand. To understand what the other yes. person. Yes. So th let's use corporal punishment as a quick example. Mm -hmm. The wife absolutely is, disagrees with it. The husband says, "Sorry, this is where we got to go." Yeah. Uh, where do you? F what's what's the middle? Yeah. Do you really have to go that way? You know, that's, that's the question. Let's talk about how this might impact our children. If we can, and the last thing, Kevin just spelled C-A-L, and the last one was maintenance. After we are able to do those things, now we have something that we can build on. This is putting the work in now. In this relationship, because we have different of opinions, we have to have a space that we're willing to, a safe place, open area, where I can voice my opinion in a way that you can receive it, and you can voice your opinion in a way that I can receive it. Mm -hmm. So collectively, we're going to come up with something that we know is conducive to the health, the raising of our children. And so that's how you work through it. Many times folks don't come in with those tools. Mm -hmm. They don't have mm -hmm. those tools. Uh, they haven't practiced those tools. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. They come mm -hmm. in with strengths mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. some strengths, but those particular tools they may not have, may not have practiced. You know? And so what we're encouraging um, co-parenting, when we're encouraging co-parenting, it means that I have to respect who you are. 
what was it about her that you liked her in the first place? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? What got you, what, there, what got you there? And the thing is, is that can you find and pull out her strengths mm -hmm. versus looking for her weaknesses? Mm -hmm. And can she do the same? And here's the other piece. Get with Real a quick. Get with a, a good support system because if you get outside of the support system that's conducive to this, mm -hmm. they can tell you some things that might hurt your relationship. Got you. Yeah. Happy Father's Day, gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming back. And we're going to continue to talk with you all because I think these are just some concrete skills that mm -hmm. people need um, yeah. in order to, to build our relationships and make our community stronger. I appreciate you being here. And when we come back, we'll pay tribute to Hampton Roads dads through song. But first, here's what's happening in Hampton Roads. <laughs> On June 19th, we celebrate Father's Day, and one local singer-songwriter wants to make sure that all of the deserving fathers out there are recognized. Elmo Lawrence wrote a tribute to fathers that he calls Daddy. He recently sat down with our Lisa Godley to talk about his motivation behind the song. And as Lisa quickly found out, he isn't the only one eager to speak out about how a good father can shape your life for the better. Just how to act. Lessons I'll never forget. There are a lot of songs for mothers, and don't get me wrong, mothers deserve every song that we can give them. God knows we do. I had a fantastic mother. But the thing was, when Father's Day rolled around, I didn't hear many songs for fathers. I'm thinking guys like my father, grandfather, and other people like those gentlemen uh, have been shortchanged as far as recognition and the music uh, behind it. So I just sat down and started writing. I wrote the lyrics and uh, just talking about fatherhood and the impact that daddy had on my life. For Elmo Lawrence, those words came easily. Always got my back like a strong safety net. Taught me just how to act. Lessons I'll never forget. Walking next to the street when strolling with my sweet. How to tie a Windsor knot. Oh, blessings what I've got. Taught me how to be a real man. Work as hard as I can. Lawrence, the oldest of eight, says his father had a strong work ethic, and he passed that on to him. And he's not alone. My dad every morning got up and went to work, no matter what the weather was, rain, shine, sleet or snow, um, and didn't have a car. And that's the, the memory that I have, and that's how it influenced me. You sacrificed for us. He was most of a big impact in my life. Play basketball, teach me how to play basketball, football, and stuff like that. Take me to a park a lot, go on bike rides and stuff like that, camping and stuff like that. So we used to do a lot of things, and it, it impacted me for when I had kids, for me to give to my kids what I had when I was younger. So he really had a big impact on my life. Two things. One, he passed when I was 14. And one of the last things he said to me was uh, graduate high school and go to college. So I did that. I just graduated from TCC here in 2010. And also, he was also just a funny guy. Whenever I was down, he made me happy. My uh, biological father died when I was three years old. What I do know is that about age five, my mother met a man. This same man taught me how to ride a bike, the same man bought me my prom dress, and so I call him father because I love him dearly. For all the dads who sacrificed and made sure that they were strong, positive influences for their children, your efforts were not in vain. In fact, most we spoke with say they can only hope to pass the characteristics, advice, and encouragement that their dads instilled in them on to their own children. 
being a dad is a wonderful thing. For me, Father's Day is every day because the kids are, my kids are great. I love them. They do well in school. They're, uh, they, uh, they're on the honor roll. Uh, uh, they give me hugs every day. For me, every day is Father's Day with them. So, so happy Father's Day. For another view, I'm Lisa Godley. And I want to say happy Father's Day to my dad, too, Charles Ham. And before we leave you this evening, I'd like to say congratulations to do two very special groups of people. First, the graduates at Madison Alternative School in Norfolk. I had the honor of serving as principal for a day at the school a few months ago, and they invited me to their graduation ceremony. These students achieved despite major obstacles, and we are so very proud of them. And a very special shout out to those who participated in the Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing Authority's Achievement Banquet, honoring those public housing residents who've graduated high school or college, received their GED, secured employment, bought their first home, started their own businesses, or otherwise became self-sufficient. It was a lovely ceremony. And as an NRHA commissioner, and on behalf of all of the commissioners, job well done. Be sure to join us next week when the Another View Roundtable returns with riveting discussion about the issues facing the African-American community. We'll see you next time for Another View, and happy Father's Day. Production funding is provided by A. Reddix & Associates, Health Information Resource Center, offering short-term training for long-term professional careers in medical coding. HIRCVA.net.